Hello everybody, we are back from Italy, we're in London and before I go on to say, do, tell you anything else, I need to show you what I came back to. It literally made me so happy. I get so excited, but I need to take you into the garden to show you. So we'll go do that. Um, we also came back and discovered we can open those doors. Now we've lived here a very long time. We've never been able to open them doors. We've tried and tried and tried again, never opened, but they're open and it is just amazing. The draft we're getting through the house on these hot days and just the, the energy is just so good. So it's all feel good since we came back. I've just flipped the camera around so you can experience with me walking through the doors for the first time into the garden. What a feeling. So the garden is a bit of a mess since we last did it. Um, the grass needs mowed and a few weeds over here need looked after. But over here, if you guys watched my last vlog on my garden, you will see the difference. So we'll start over here. These are all of the tomato plants. And look, I mean, tomatoes it gets me so excited i can't tell you and we're gonna have a lot of tomatoes because i overplanted. so we have three pots here and there's also some over there over here is our bietola our chard as you can see it's just got bigger and stronger and it just keeps growing every time we cut it it just keeps growing our rocket although a little there is some so we're gonna have that today this, guys, are the cucumbers. So you can see all the flowers have come through and the little baby cucumbers are there. There's quite a few. You can see some here as well. And then obviously our grape tree is just looking so full, which is great. We actually got some twine because they were all just growing all over the floor, all over the other vegetables. Um, um, so you can see one's broken here, but the rest of them are actually held up by the twine and they've just grown up. So now they've got to the top, we're gonna start to guide them through. And we basically want this to grow all the way over this. We also had to add in <laughs> some extra blocks because it wasn't strong enough and we just tied it all up with cable ties so that should be secure enough then i mean this was just the best part for me these are our courgette plants look guys the flowers are there they're growing they're abundant and then over here is our first courgette that we've ever grown i'm literally like a proud mama so we're gonna pick that and eat that tonight actually i'll just pick it with you guys now so all you need to do when you pick a courgette is just twist it literally there and it just comes off and there oh my god it just makes me so happy and it is huge it's massive um, and we have a lot coming through. So with the courgettes, they will just keep on growing. The more you pick them, the more they grow. The turnips are looking fabulous. You can eat those leaves. These are more tomato plants. So you can see how many tomatoes we're gonna have. And they just look so great. Another courgette plant and another courgette plant and more tomato plants. I don't know what. I was thinking I went a bit crazy. I think I just assumed that they wouldn't all sprout and grow. I don't know. And our beds are now full and there's stuff planted in them. So this was our kale we were growing inside. We've only just planted it out. So it's gonna take a while for these little sprouts to get big and strong. And we've just planted some celery seeds. That didn't work for me a few weeks ago. So I've tried again and also here we've planted spinach 
And actually, if I take you over here again, I did have spinach, but because we went away, the spinach went to flower because we didn't pick it. But what happens, as you can see, is the plant gives you more seeds. Can you see them? Um, and if you let them dry off, you can literally just pull them off. So if I can get a few in my hand, can you see? So I've literally just taken some of those and planted them into this raised bed. And we'll see how that goes. It's just an experiment. I have no idea how it's gonna go. Um, and then over here, we have more courgette plants. Again, I don't know why I grew so many, but I did. And if you didn't know, I'm sure you do. These flowers are edible and you literally just pull them off. But what I will say is pull them off when you're about to eat them because they wilt very quickly and you want them super fresh. Oh, and here are our runner beans, but they're not looking so good, unfortunately. We think the plant has a disease. We're not sure, we're gonna give them a chance. Who knows? But, I mean, you can see the difference of how incredible. And when I got home, I just it just made my day. I was pretty sad leaving Italy. <laughs> And then the minute I saw this, I was like, okay, it's okay. I, I have a job to do. I have to look after all of this. Also, our basil is just coming along beautifully. Guys, I can't tell you how amazing it smells. It does seem to be eaten a little bit, but not so much. I might just move it from where I had it. And we have planted, replanted coriander seeds because the last lot just didn't go down very well so we've put them in a pot i really can't tell you guys how happy this makes me <laughs> i'm gonna make dinner tonight out of a few of the things that are growing i'm gonna do something with courgettes we're gonna have a salad with the rocket um and then the zucchini flowers the courgette flowers I'm gonna just have with, like I do this toast thing, I'll actually share it with you guys. It's a nice way of eating the courgette flowers raw, so you get all the nutrients from them. You can cook them, you can do like a pasta with, the pasta sauce with them. There's so many things you can do, but, oh, and I've got the chard. Oh, the options, the options, the options of my veggie garden. It actually makes me want to just dig away more and more grass. <laughs> I don't, I don't know if that's a good idea. I really want to though. I can hear something. Tommy? Tommy? What are you doing? Let's see if we can get him. See what he's up to. Oh, it's awful in here. Oh! What are you playing at, Tommy? What is this cat up to? Oh! <laughs> Tommy! I nearly trod on you. Well, he listened to me and he got out of under the stairs. So he's a good boy. I'll go give him a cuddle afterwards. Um, I've just freshened up. The weather has changed slightly and it's a bit gloomy and I got a little bit cold and I was in my gym gear earlier doing a bit of yoga and a little bit sweaty so I'm ready for the day but I wanted to sit down with you because I've had so many questions about our travel experience when we went to Italy and also when we arrived back from Italy overall it was absolutely fine it was actually really nice it was very quiet um, we flew out from Heathrow there wasn't loads of people but of course you need to wear a mask the entire time which is what's quite annoying apart from when you're eating. Um, there was a lot of waiting time. I think because we were one of the first flights out, um, things weren't quite organized. So I'm sure that's a lot better now. Um, most of the shops are shut. So I would strongly suggest if you're traveling, take yourself a packed lunch. We're used to doing that. So it was we were prepared, but take food with you. They did actually give us a 
little food bag. I suppose it depends on what airline you're flying with. We flew BA and we got a bag that had crisps, biscuits and a small bottle of water. We obviously didn't have the crisps or the biscuits because they're not good, very unhealthy. Um, but we had the bottle of water and then we just had our snacks so we were fine. We were also given a little bag that had hand sanitizer and wipes and we were told to wipe down our seat and the table tray, basically everything you were touching. And we then had to do that again when we left the flight. So it was very clean and sterilized and the flight was fairly quiet. So it was a very peaceful and calm trip. We were given a form we had to fill out. It was A4 in size and it had about seven to eight questions, basics, name, flight, address, and basically where you were staying in Italy. So they knew where you were while you were in Italy. We gave that in at passport control and that was it. It was very easy and it was very smooth. On the way back, we flew from Pisa to London Heathrow. We arrived at Pisa airport. It was very organized. There was only one entrance into the airport. At the entrance, you had security. You had to give your passport and your um, boarding pass. That was checked. Anyone that wasn't flying couldn't come into the airport full stop. So we had to wave goodbye at the uh, at the doors. We had to go through this machine. Um, I'll pop it here for you because I was insta storing the whole thing. Um, so we had to go through that. And then once we were in the airport, it was so eerie. There was not a soul in the airport. I've never ever seen it like that in my entire life. Bearing in mind, it was the middle of summer in an Italian airport. Yes, Tommy, can you believe it? Tommy can't believe it either. I know, Tommy. I know. I know, there wasn't even a soul. Nobody. Um, I'll pop a video of that for you there as well. Oh, did he just open the door himself? Or was that Steph? I hope that was Steph. I'll pop that video there for you as well so you guys can see how quiet it was. Um, again, the airport, nothing was open. Going through security was a dream because there was no one there other than us. I know, Tommy, there was nobody in the airport. Once we were through security, there was, I think, one or two food places open, but you couldn't really sit, you couldn't go into them. I know, Tommy, we couldn't get any food, but we had our own food, I know. What is up with him today? What's wrong? What's wrong? You could just go up to the deli bit. Um, and order something. But again, I just recommend taking your own food. It's just easier, safer and healthier. Same procedure as UK, had to keep our masks on the entire time, which was fine, but in hot countries, it's a struggle. It literally feels like you're suffocating. The only time you can take it off is to eat. So I literally was nibbling away at my hemp crackers the entire time <laughs> to get some air. Terrible. Um, got on the plane. Same procedure, sanitized, had to wipe down everything. That plane was even quieter than the plane coming out to Italy. It was like flying business class, we had a row each. There, was, there wasn't a soul, honestly, it was so quiet. A very peaceful trip, pleasant trip. Got to London Heathrow, it was all going fine. And then we got to passport control, which looked like Piccadilly Circus. We were so confused, because obviously, They've been banging on about two metres apart and now everyone's crammed into this holding space at passport control. Um, greeted by three women sort of shouting at us, have you completed the form? We don't know what they're talking about. I don't know what form she's on about. The passengers around us don't know what form she's on about. Passengers from other flights don't know what this woman's going on about. And I tried to ask her questions. She didn't really speak English. Um, she was getting very agitated. But I just wanted to know so that I could A, get out of the situation as quickly as I could and be in the cab that was waiting outside. And secondly, just to be more informed for the trip that I'm on next. Anyway, she kept pointing to this holding area next to the queue. So we went over there. There was not a staff member there. So we're all standing around looking at each other. No one's saying anything. And there was a small little poster of a QR code. So I got my phone out, took a picture and it pulled up the government website, which was a form that said four pages. So we start filling out this form and each page was three to four pages within a page. 
And while this is happening, this queue is just getting longer and longer and longer. So we quickly jump back in that queue to fill out the form because I wasn't going to waste more time than we already had. And good job we did because we were in that queue for nearly two hours. It was crazy. I don't know whether they just weren't organised, but it baffles me as to why they didn't give us this information when we were on the plane or leaving the plane. I don't know. Or even before we got on the plane. I'm sure that form can be filled out. But anyway, I'm linking this form below in the description box for you. So you guys don't end up in that situation when you travel back to the UK. Um, anyway, I got through. Savannah was like, yep, go get the luggage. I'll meet you there. I get the luggage. Half an hour passes. No Stefania. I'm like, what's going on? I give her a ring. And she's like, they have told me to stay behind because I haven't filled the form out correctly. So I have to fill it in again. I mean... So we didn't leave there for another hour after that. So in total, the time we spent doing that was the same time that we were on the plane. It was just a joke. And it was such a shame because everything else was just so smooth. But these things happen and we're safe and sound. We're at home now. If there's anything that you guys want to know about my trip, if there's anything specific that I haven't talked about or missed, then drop me a comment and I'll get back to you. And also guys, if you've been on a trip recently, let us know your experience because things are changing so quickly these days when it comes to traveling. It's just good to keep each other in the loop. I mean, I'm leaving in two weeks time to go back to Italy and it will just be so good to know if there's anything that's changed that I need to be doing that will just save me time um, before that trip. So comment below, let me know. I'm going to stop waffling now because I want to go and have a look at a delivery that came. It's a very special delivery. I'm going to go show you guys what came today. This is our delivery. A bunny rabbit. This is Sniffy. So Sniffy is our friend's bunny and they're, they've gone away for a few weeks and we said we'd look after him. So we have the joy of looking after this adorable, adorable animal. He's so cute. I've never had a bunny in my life. I've always wanted one. So it's a real treat to, um, to have him. So adorable. I'm gonna put you down so you can have a run around. Yes. Here, stretch your legs. Stretch your legs, Sniffy. Oh. So adorable. I'm falling in love with him. Um, for those of you that are wondering, Tommy isn't in the house. When we take Sniffy out, Tommy goes out, out, and they stay apart. But they are best buds. Tommy loves him and Sniffy loves Tommy. Um, in the evening, Tommy will sit by his cage. It's the cutest thing. And also he does it in the garden when Sniffy's out. So we have a bit of a full house being back, but it's really nice. It keeps us occupied being back. Um, and now I think I'm gonna make myself a little snack and I wanted to show you guys what I do with the zucchini flowers from the garden. So we'll go to the kitchen. Oh, Sniffy, what are you doing? Busy, I like him being out and just around the house, it's so cute. Um, and here's Stefania. Hello. Do you fancy a snack? We're going to show everyone how we use the zucchini from the garden. Hold on, actually, I'm going to take you in the garden with me to pick the flowers because they're in the garden and it's nice to know how to pick them. So let's go. I'll only need about three flowers. Look, there's one just here. Beautiful. So all you do is get your fingers around the base and then you just oh you just sort of pull it and it should come off so you want to pick them just before you're using them because they will very quickly okay so i basically want to show you guys what we've recently been making with the courgette flowers normally you would cook them and put them in like pasta sauces or like in a risotto and stuff like that, but we really wanted to eat them raw. So we put together this little snack. Um, 
it's healthy it's basically a zucchini flour on toast but it's a healthy version so we don't eat normal bread um we use this one it's called the heart of nature super seeded vegan loaf and it's free from wheat dairy and yeast i'll show you this is the only thing that i can eat i can't eat wheat because i'm really allergic um, but this one contains just oat flakes Sunflower seeds, brown linseeds, golden linseeds, rapeseed oil, pumpkin seeds, millet seeds, um, milled brown linseeds, apple cider vinegar. So it's basically a seeded bread. That's all that there is to it. So it's very healthy and you're still getting a kind of bread food when you want one. And then of course, you just need about three, three to four, we're using three, courgette flowers so that'll be for two slices we're just going to have one each so i'm just going to show you how to put that together okay so you need to start by just slicing the zucchini flour i've cut the rest of them already then you grab your slices of the seeded bread and we use the garlic in olive oil. If you didn't catch my Healthy Hacks vlog, I show you how to make it on there. This has just been in the fridge. This is just garlic, cloves, and olive oil. And we just put it on the base. We like the oil to soak into the bread at the bottom. If you're not really into garlic, then just leave this step out we are garlic obsessed, so we like a lot of it. Then we use Violife's creamy cheese, I suppose. It's like a, it's sort of like a Philadelphia. And we just put a nice layer. Then at this point, we put the pepper and salt on. And then lastly, layer up the courgette flowers. So I kind of do them like head to toe like that. It just looks nice. So easy to do, so delicious, and so nutritious, and it's just so healthy. Honestly, we are having this daily. I'm so excited to eat this. Oh, I think Tommy's here for lunch as well. Tommy he can't have any of this, Steph. There's a slice for you too. Oh, <laughs> no, it's not all for you. She's gonna try and take it off me. So I think we're gonna actually. I'll give you the so small. Pretty. I'll give you the bigger piece because. But you said a smaller bit. She, I always give her the bigger piece. We better let Tommy in. I think yeah. this is a good time to end the vlog. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope that it gave you a little bit of insight to travel at the moment, and obviously you enjoyed my veg update. And that's Tommy saying bye as well. He said bye. He's saying bye. He said please subscribe. This isn't for you. That's what he said. Is that what you said? Please subscribe. He's so clever. To my channel. He's so clever. So good. Hit that bell so you get a reminder every single time I post. I post every Sunday. And lastly, head over to my Instagram. I am there daily. Come say hey. I love to hear from you guys. It's at honestly Alessandra. So until next week, guys, look after yourself. Stay safe and stay healthy. I am going to tuck right in to this.